All that you have done to us, O Lord, you have done with true judgment, for we have sinned against you and not obeyed your commandments. But give glory to your name and deal with us according to the bounty of your mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of Jesus, our risen Lord, be with you all and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters and all who are watching at home, a warm welcome to our uh, Sunday morning Mass here in St. Aidan's on the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We come with great hope in our hearts today because God is a God of mercy and love. He hears our cries when we turn to him and call out to him. So let us open our hearts now to his grace, speaking in the silence of our hearts. Let us prepare now to celebrate the sacred mysteries as we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all, by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object, what the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel, is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he has himself committed. When the sinner renounces sin, to become law-abiding and honest. He deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. The Word of the Lord. Remember your mercy, Lord. Remember your mercy, Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Remember your mercy, Lord. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth. In your love remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercy, Lord. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Remember your mercy, Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love can persuade you at all, or the spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, 
then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing that would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everybody is to be self-effacing. Always consider the other person to be better than yourself, so that nobody thinks of his own interests first, but everyone thinks of other people's interests instead. In your minds, you must be the same as Christ Jesus. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on the earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus. And that, every, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The sheep that belong to me Listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not go. But afterwards thought better of it and went. The man then went and said the same thing to the second, who said, Certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said, Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you, a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Please have a seat. My brothers and sisters, saying yes to God demands our whole heart and soul. The great commandment of the Jewish people was to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And Jesus added the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor. As yourself. We can say we love God, but the best way to show that we love God is by what we do, not by what we say. Simon Peter was asked three times by Jesus after his resurrection, Simon Peter, do you love me? Simon replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to them, said to him, Feed my sheep, show me that you love me. He was asked to show the depth of his love by the way he lived his life. At the end of this week will be the Feast of St. Francis, one of my favorite saints. He was famous for many things, including the beautiful peace prayer, make me a channel of your peace. But I think that St. Francis's most profound teaching was when he said to people, preach the gospel at all time. And if you have to, use words to. The Word of God today asks us to look at our lives as a Catholic. Do I say I am a Christian 
but not live as one? If I was hauled before a court of law, would there be enough evidence for me to be convicted for being a Catholic? Our friendship with God is very important, and it will increase the more we pray and try to live the Beatitudes. Again, St. Francis of Assisi was a man who appreciated all the things that God had given him, the warmth of the sun, the refreshing water, the gifts of nature, the riches of the earth, and the power of love. He did not need much else to live on. And in fact, in choosing poverty, St. Francis chose what was essential and convinced those around him in his day to stop fighting and start appreciating the gift of life itself and the presence of God. Most mainstream religions have developed elaborate rituals and clear moral guidelines to help their members establish and maintain a good and fruitful relationship with God. And this is surely responsible and praiseworthy. But all this becomes problematic, however, when one's relationship with God is reduced primarily to observing rituals and keeping rules. And this is what Jesus was accusing the Pharisees of in today's Gospel. The scribes and Pharisees of Jesus' day certainly appeared more religious than the tax collectors and the prostitutes. However, their strict observance hid a deep and fatal flaw. They believed that they could save themselves, that in a sense they were saving themselves and didn't need God. It was obvious that Jesus was not despising ritual and disregarding moral code. But it was obvious also that he only wants us, he wants us not only to say the right things, like the first son, but to act in a way that benefits others, like the second son. This will happen only when we are truly converted from selfish ways and become exemplary in tolerance, compassion, and forgiveness. This is preaching the gospel. This is living the gospel, not talking about it, not telling people things about it, but living it. Sometimes people are repelled by a religious observance that has no depth. Sometimes people, maybe even at home watching, feel that they don't want to belong to a religious community because they want to live an authentic life. But we can help one another live that authentic life by praying together, by recognizing our need for God. It is God who saves us. So saying yes to God, my brothers and sisters, means being aware of our friendship with God and listening in silence to what he is asking us so that then we can put it into practice. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, today and each day for the grace to live our yes to God. We stand together now and profess our faith in God's love for us in the words of our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and became man. And for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My dear friends, today we mark the 106th World Day of Prayer for Migrants and Refugees with its theme, Forced Like Jesus Christ to Flee, with a focus this year on the pastoral care of internally displaced persons. In response to our prayer, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. May the commitment which Pope Francis has shown towards the spiritual and emotional and material needs of refugees inspire us to provide a welcome and support for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May we see in the face of every refugee the face of Jesus Christ, who himself, along with his parents, was forced to flee from the land of his birth to a place where language, culture, and faith were alien to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May we remember especially today the people of Syria, who in the devastation and grinding poverty and fear caused by war are feeling hope draining away from them as anxiety for the safety and future of their children overwhelms them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May our deceased relatives and friends acclaim Jesus as Lord to the glory of God the Father. We remember especially Mary Taggart, Owen Flanagan, Joyce Toyd, who have died recently, and all those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, hear us. We take a moment in the silence of our hearts to bring before the Lord our own prayers, our own worries, our own concerns, and our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, your word is truth, a guide for justice, an energy for mercy, and a blessing for peace. Be merciful to all people, especially refugees who are now homeless, destitute, and fearful, who feel abandoned and with no place to call home. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now with me, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your Church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Aidan, St. Anthony, St. Francis, St. Therese, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. A prayer of spiritual communion for those at home who are unable to come to communion today at Mass. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. It's great to see you all today at Mass today, and we thank all those who are at home and joining us by means of social media. We ask the Lord to bless us in our week ahead. Um, Thursday marks the beginning of the month of October and the beginning of the month of the Rosary, and you're invited to pray the Rosary each day, or at least part of it each day, asking for especially an end to our pandemic and to um, increase in the gift of faith, and also for the work of the missions throughout the world. Um, 29th of September is, of course, the Feast of the Archangels. The 1st of October is the Feast of St. Therese of Lisieux. And the 2nd of October is the Feast of the Guardian Angels. So we call on our heavenly uh, protectors to watch over us and keep us safe from the COVID-19 and to give us the grace that we need to serve God with all our heart. Hope you make the most of today's lovely sunny day and get the chance to get some fresh air in your lungs today and keep healthy and well. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you with his love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.